it's almost like the drug needed to get washed out the system that even when you, you'd stop using technology for an hour before bed, the impact of that technology, even though you'd stop using it, could still be seen in the echo of sleep disruption for a week later. It was a very influential city and a very prestigious channel. When was that, a while ago? That was probably about 10 years ago. Okay. But then Michael Gradazar, this incredible Australian researcher, started to say, well, I can't replicate these findings. And what he was discovering is that it's not the blue light that's the problem. Now, the blue light will change aspects of your melatonin. And melatonin is a hormone. It simply tells your brain and your body when it's nighttime, when it's time to fall asleep. It doesn't participate in the generation of sleep. Melatonin is like the starting official at the 100 meter race. It brings all of the races to the line and it begins the timing of the race, but it doesn't participate in the creation of the race itself. That's a different set of chemicals. It doesn't make you go to sleep. It doesn't make you, and if you look at what we call meta-analyses where we gather together all of the individual studies on a topic and we put them in a big statistical bucket, what they found is that melatonin will only improve the speed with which you fall asleep by about um, 3.4 minutes and it will only increase the efficiency of your sleep by about 2.2%, so not much more than placebo. Um, so melatonin is, it, it's now the placebo effect is the most reliable effect in all of pharmacology. 